Hey, Gloucester Township. I'm Joe Allen. Here with Keith Gibbons. This How's is the going? GT Observer Podcast. Just realized that our intro here still says Restore GD Podcast, but hey, it's a branding change. We've got a couple yeah. things to do here, and uh, we and, notice uh, little things pop up here and there. We'll address not, them then. Not a huge staff to go about doing it all. So <laughs> no, no, no. I've got a uh, I've got a popular guest here tonight. Uh, popular in the way that uh, folks from from our council are probably. Probably in many ways, yeah. Probably very eager to see this, but we have Mrs. Denise Coyne here, or or as or as they as they call you, Miss Coyne. Coyne. Yes, Miss Coyne. That changed forty two years ago. <laughs> so it's been Mrs. Denise Coyne for forty two years, but uh, but uh, Denise, you go to council meetings, you ask a ton of questions, and uh, come up with some some really good questions yeah. and and have knowledge of things that uh in our town that that i guess that i don't know that anybody else knows yeah. I, when when it comes to when it comes to to land changing hands or things being done on land i don't know that there's anybody else including absolutely everybody on the council <laughs> yeah there's so many times i think things have changed that she remembers that they completely forgot because there's so many changes of hands it's amazing there's, there's no way anybody on the planning has any idea. <laughs> An eighth of the knowledge, eighth, eighth, eighth is is probably that's probably that's probably pretty gracious. But yes. but uh, so we've got Denise here on the podcast, and uh, we are going over the February twenty sixth, yeah, February twenty sixth um, meeting, which was controversial in many ways. Man, I thought I was going to be. Well, I thought that this—I thought this one was going to be Sam. Thought it was going to be the Sam show, and you know, it's, it's budget time, so it's budget. It's Sam's Super Bowl season here. Oh, yeah. it you is know, Super Bowl for him. Yeah. As, as as an accountant, he's he's killing it right now. He's just killing it doing doing yeah. tax stuff, and then he takes time out of that to to, do, to redo GT's taxes also, <laughs> <laughs> or their or their yeah. budgets and their budgets. Yeah. Uh, comes in and asks questions for the budget, so. I thought this was going to be. I figured it's probably going to be a pretty long council meeting. Decided to stay home and watch it. Uh, yeah. Man, it started at what seven thirty, ended at eleven. It was a very long council meeting. A very long council meeting. Uh, lots, lots going on in that council meeting. Uh, a lot of budget stuff. So yes, yeah, so this might be a long podcast here. It's going to be yeah for the for the short attention span people that complain about the podcast. Podcast I think long. what we're going to do, though, is we're going to try to limit the uh, amount of budget stuff that we talk about because we are going to have Sam in to talk about you know that. We are going to go over, obviously, you know some of the major points, but let him go granular on his Super Bowl stuff over here. Well, yeah. uh, I'll try to keep my little friends in line. So. You're, oh, your little friends? <laughs> That's yeah. right. That's right. Many times during, many times during this, uh, during this uh, we... Yeah, de- 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 Denise and her little friends were brought up, so yeah, I can only imagine that her little friends. I know are- I was definitely one of the little friends. I I stirred up. <sighs> oh man! Did oh I man! Piss did everyone you? off? Yes. Well, I don't know about everyone. You know what? I know I pissed him off, but now that I think about it, you were the theme for like what from twenty twenty one until midway into twenty twenty two. Who me? Yeah, you were you were the le- you and Dina were the letter people. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Controversial letter. I'm always a topic up there. I guess. And then <laughs> uh, I don't get involved in that in their I don't in their uh, what do you call that their domain. Like, yeah. I, go ahead, you let it have it. I can you know. And, and when it finally got quiet, uh, you just you just you just went and did it again. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's uh so so the first thing uh, the first thing that happened here with this council meeting. Was that uh, so? The agenda, the, yeah, the, the agenda is supposed to be supposed to be aware of what's going to be discussed at the meeting, and that's put on an agenda and then put onto the website ahead of time. And if I'm not mistaken, on Denise, Fridays, you, usually you. So the agenda is also, if I'm not mistaken, I thought it was supposed to be posted somewhere in public view that the public could see it, not online, but somewhere in physically in in person, right? Right, and online well, is that correct i think it's supposed to be um on the bulletin board in the municipal building in the you know council right. chambers it's supposed to be posted there the clerk is supposed to have a copy of it obviously 
for anybody that requests it, but you can't request it from Thursday night until Monday morning. Right, because they're not in the office right. there. So, and then um, they're supposed to post it online. So. Right. So then when it doesn't get posted online, it causes a, you know, an issue oh, yeah. that no one can actually get it until the morning of the the day that it's, the meeting is. And the well, law is for 48 hours. Yeah, in the past, I mean, this isn't the first time that this has happened. And in the past when it happened, the clerk um, told us that we could email her, even if it was the weekend. And she would try to get it posted. But now that actually happened this weekend, right? It was she was alerted by email, right, that it was not posted. Yeah, I did email her, but I didn't discover it wasn't posted until Sunday. So I didn't email her till Sunday. Right. So, you know, I don't know if she didn't see it or what, but it still wasn't posted. At the at the end of the day, is that the the citizens' responsibility or is it the town's responsibility? Um, what, I think that's part of the question. One would think that it's the town's responsibility, yes. Right. Yeah. So, you know, when, when D- you will see in the in that clip oh. where Dean is asking, like, well, what would you like us to do? We shouldn't have to do anything. Like, they're, that's, that's their job to do, not ours. They're lucky in the way that there's only a few people that really care about council meetings. I mean, so it's in other towns, in other towns when you drive through, it's it's on it's on digital bulletin boards. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it in all the surrounding towns. It, as little as Pine Hill is, it's yeah. on two bulletin boards. It's on two digital boards there. So in here, it's a little bit more hidden. We have council meetings, and uh, so the, so the very least we can expect, all right, at least have the agenda on the website. Even though it takes quite a bit to find the, if you to find the agenda for the council meeting on the website, unless you're kind of a veteran at it. It's yeah, pretty it's tough also. Of, yeah, we talked yeah. about that before. I mean, it's worthwhile considering that maybe that is the problem. Maybe that's why people don't bother to look because it's so hard to find. And if it's not there, nobody's going to bother to try to get it, even if you could. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, I mean, I would think that if it were on the, if it were on the sign and if it were... Right there on the website, current events, next council meeting. Maybe click on that link for the council meeting, and then that maybe maybe give you the the rundown for what's going the the agenda for what's going to happen. Right. <clears throat> we also, went over this in in the last uh, I think GT Talk podcast where you know we're talking about how much of a mess the website is. When you go on, the very first thing is like something from 2022 or right. something like that. That's, that's why? Okay. Why is that the first thing that you see? Tons there? of old stuff. How about not? The, the the current meeting. What, what's wrong right. with that? Well, the digital sign, I live right down the road, and I ride by yeah. it all the time. So mm-hmm. today I looked at it, and I could tell you that the Easter Bunny brunch is coming up. Oh, yeah, up. Easter Bunny's coming yeah. up, yep. Yeah, it's always it's always these feel-good things and not actual governmental-type yeah. things posted on there. Yeah, go and, on and our videos on our YouTube channel and see. I mean, that we did a whole video about that whole yeah, thing. Right. Going to other towns and... Mm-hmm. But so anyway, the question was asked of council, like, okay, this has happened now multiple times. Me yeah. going to go video record this was so that because we get gas lit into, you know, saying I was up there, it was on page, you know, whatever, or it was, you know, and then, and, or anyway, so Dean and I asked, like, what, what are we going to do? Are, are, are we still going to hold this meeting, even though you again did not, you know, re- uh, advertise it correctly here? The Agenda was not posted until after 12 o'clock today, so therefore I couldn't even put a EGOV question if I had a question regarding the agenda, especially the fact that we are going to be talking about the budget, and that's large sums of money. And myself and other citizens would truly appreciate if we postponed this whole entire meeting due to the fact that we, the citizens, did not have a chance to review the agenda as it was not posted. I apologize that it was not posted. It was requested by the clerk who posted on Thursday. Uh, it did not make it to the website. It was posted at 8.52 a.m. Uh, this morning. Is that correct, Madam Clerk? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I looked, I looked at 9 o'clock before I went to work, and it wasn't there. It wasn't until after 12 o'clock. Budget. This is the second reading of the capital budget. True story. Introduced at, at the last meeting. Nothing has changed with that capital budget. There is a hearing that takes place for that, and there'll be ample time if anyone would like to speak on that capital budget. If any of my colleagues would would want to 
table this meeting and not move forward, please speak up. I guess we're going to move forward. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Kind of a smug way <laughs> to, oh, yeah. uh, to well, look here, back and forth. Here, here's a question. Can they speak? No. Can and they I'll, speak And up? I'll tell you what, several times through this meeting, so I'm paying attention to that, to Mr. Nash. He's new. I like him. I've talked to him a few times. I like the guy. I'm going to give the guy a chance. And I've noticed he's down there, and he's and he's doing this. And a few times, Orlando looks at him, and there's no acknowledgement. Yeah. So I, you know, I I don't think he's been told yet. Don't talk. We saw this. <laughs> we we saw this before, and it blew my mind way back when when Paul Krug would address different people right. with, with questions. Mm -hmm. And this new thing came up. All the questions have to go through Orlando. He's the one that's prepped for everything. So nobody else is able to talk. Dan talked. Because Dan was pretty much well in in the inn. But, but Dan's also just a good talker. So they let Dan run with it. Well, but, I mean, there is a... How a meeting's run, and they, that you know he he is the person that's there. But the rules and what are when I say rules, the, the way it's supposed to run and what can actually take place are two different things. You can allow people to talk. He does not allow people to talk. It's you know it's, it's his meeting. He's you know he's running at. They should be addressed you know to him. So he's going to take that to the umph degree and say no. Nope, everything has to come to me. I'm not going to allow anyone else. You know, to talk. You know what I mean? Like you've, I, I, yeah. everyone's been to other towns to see. Not everybody, but people have been to other towns and other meetings do are not run that way. There are other tyrannical, you know, governments out there that run, you know, run their um, meetings that way. But it doesn't have to be that way. I haven't really. Yeah, I, there I, can I've be watched, leeway I've a few. in that. No. Well, I've, I've watched a few, and there is there's there's conversation in, in other meetings that I've watched. And there's not here because they're, or they're not really allowed to. Right. Well, there, there is conversation, but it's always the administration in Orlando. It's right. Never, the rules are the bare it's never minimum. never our representatives having a discussion. It's always Orlando and Cardis and Carlemir. It's never, you know, yeah, every, everybody, a, a council discussion. Yeah. Right. So, Dina asks... Hey, can we postpone that there wasn't 48 hours notice with the agenda uh, nobody really got a chance to look it over should we just postpone the meeting the answer was no well and his, his thing was that nothing has changed but that's not the point the point is that the the public wasn't made aware of what even <clears throat> is on the agenda right and he was only talking about the capital budget it was a large agenda right. with many different right items. there was many other things on there right so but anyway the next that, big thing that came up was uh, it was a resolution uh, regarding quarterly port reports from uh, from gross marijuana sales? Okay, yeah. And uh, I just I, it got me it got me a little curious. You know, we're, there's a lot of people that don't want marijuana sales. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of people very vocal about it. Um, the cowboy hat lady, she definitely doesn't want it. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure it's not, I, 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 Oh, I think you're talking about. Uh, uh, but the, the part of the oh. the <laughs> she does not like <coughs> no. marijuana sales. Um, so, so just a little thing I want to add here. Uh, from July 2022 through June 2023, New Jersey's dispensaries sold more than $734 million in cannabis products, according to statistics from the Cannabis Regulatory Commission. On average, municipalities by the network collected about $465,000 in cannabis tax revenue last year. But the range goes from about $191,000 in Monroe Township, Gloucester County, from the botanist dispensary in the Williamstown area to more than one million dollars in Belmar, Camden County, from Cureleaf. So the Cureleaf is paying one million in taxes. 
one million in the one, course of a year, right? One million dollars in tax revenue from Cureleaf. Okay, mm. then I have a question. How come every time I go by the um, cannabis dispensaries in Gloucester Township, nobody's ever there? Do we even have it? Do, do we? Yeah, the one that's over the friendlies. The yeah, old the friendlies. friendlies. Nobody's ever. I've there. never seen a car there really, no. but I don't oh. really go by there too too often. And I also don't intentionally take note, but when I have noticed, there hasn't been anyone there. How much of a camera? Are maybe wearing? they're just not busy yet. I don't know. Who knows? I have I no idea. I got a couple cameras. I'm gonna go over there and investigate. And the there you go. And the um, the Belmore and those numbers like are they from like? Oh, that says 2022 to 2023, right? Yeah. So it is fairly recent. I was saying there's there was maybe less of them at, at the time of that. Um, you know the stats, so yeah. now that there's more of them that yeah, because you remember June 2023, each location we, goes down in in revenue because it's the same amount of demand just spread out. Kinda, right. You know, yeah. Mid 2023, we had we, we had none in Gloucester Township, and then we didn't have any. Um, they were basically the only two, uh, and uh, it, Cure Leaf's a little bit Cure, Cure Leaf's a little bit skewed because Cure Leaf uh, is it's not medical and recreational, isn't it? I believe they both are, but Cure Leaf also. Uh, I believe Cure Leaf also. They have a, also have a grow facility in Cure Leaf. Oh, okay. So yeah. Right. So there's there's, there's revenue you, from that. You drive by it, you smell it because right. it's because they're growing it there. As to where the botanist over there in front of Sam's Club on in Williamstown, that's just a retail outlet, and they actually sell uh, from my from my gather some the like, Cure Leaf products there too. So gotcha. Uh, so your regular storefront, you know, you're probably looking at about two hundred grand. Mm-hmm. In tax revenue, so if you add a couple of those in the Gloucester Township, like we plan to, a couple, it could. Well, yeah, we've got I like a, we, well, last, what do we have, last, eleven approved or something. Eleven was the last time. Last number yeah, that I, I knew. Think, I think there's been more approved since then. So, yeah. so I, I mean, if, I don't know if you if you spread them out, it's not. I I I, I like the idea of taking some kind of tax burden away from yeah. the residents. Um. So yeah, just I just want to add those numbers in for the for the folks that 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 really hate it. But uh, next up on the agenda was the second reading of the capital budget, and this is uh, this is this is this is a big topic every year. So um, it's a lot of money every year. Yeah. So Orlando read off the numbers for the capital budget in uh, in in his Orlandoish kind of way. I just. When he reads numbers, it's always just appropriate the sum of nine million one hundred thirty-seven dollars four hundred four hundred nineteen dollars. Therefore, authorizing the issuance of general obligation bonds or bond anticipation notes of the township of Gloucester, County of Camden, New Jersey, in the aggregate principal amount of up to eight million seven hundred two three hundred three dollars over a billion three hundred million trillion three hundred million dollars. <laughs> Pointing out random numbers. <laughs> so, I just, he just, he just saw some numbers and he just blurted out random <laughs> numbers. So I don't. But essentially, uh, there there are nine million dollars there, uh, in in capital budgets that they are going to go out for, uh, to borrow for. So what are some of the things that we we're uh, replacing here in our capital budget? Well, we're gonna do more roof work. Okay. Uh, we're gonna buy some zero needed. turn lawnmowers, and uh, there's gonna be some roads. There's gonna be some road work done. Computers, right? Weed whackers. Are we yeah. doing weed whackers this year again? A lot of yeah, a lot of computers. I the, the computers. I don't. I don't know that I, that I took any notes on the computers, but I was thinking. I know it's eighty seven. Yeah, yeah it's thirty three computers says, for 80, yeah. 84 grand, something like that. Which is which is twenty five hundred dollars a computer? Yeah, they're doing gaming computers, I guess. I mean, so yeah. I don't. I don't know if they've got like full blown like racing rigs in there with the steering wheels and the, and the monitors <laughs> it's be and everywhere. Anywhere. What but, are the computers that expensive? But it, but it, but a but a business class desktop computer is about seven hundred bucks. I was gonna say eight hundred, but yeah, yeah okay, seven eight six six ninety nine for a Dell business class computer, not low end. Middle of the road, mm-hmm. what you need from a township. You're not doing. You're not. You're not. You're not doing CAD on there or anything like that. And but, then, but Joe, you're not considering the engineer to figure out where to put it on the desk. Oh, that's true. We might <laughs> need. Yeah, Remington and Vernick or something might got, need to come by and 
which part of the desk should we put this computer now? We need yes, a study I, done. I, uh, which, where, what's the best? Where did angle? it come from? Well, it was right here. You know, I. It's probably right there. It's probably where we're gonna put it. Yeah, that's so that's. Yeah. I forgot. I forgot about the consultant fees for for those. But I'm sure that there's something else in there. We didn't yeah. dig in. Uh, I did text Sam and ask, hey, do you have the breakdown of each individual purchase in there? And he's like, no, but I can get it for you right now if you want. I'm like, I, I don't want to go that, that, that in-depth. But yeah. uh, I did take notes from that. Um, uh, the yeah, the, the zero-turn lawnmowers, they, they seem to have gone up in price, too, Sam had pointed yeah, out. Sam had some questions about zero-turn lawnmowers. Because apparently we've been buying zero-turn lawnmowers for uh, several years now. And he was right. kind of like... Hey, how many do we need? Yeah. What's the second one? Zero turn diesel motors. Um, we we outsource a lot, a lot of, um, of the, the landscaping, landscaping to our landscaping. So, how, how many diesel, diesel motors, motors, motors do we need? Is the cars? Is that something you have to answer? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. The reason I'm asking is, is I thought it was over. We 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 have, we have well well after four or two, was two, two uh, uh, we're gonna have nine of these diesel rollers. Um, starting eighteen or two, they cost thirty nine thousand. 19, 19 or 2, two was 19,000. Last year, we borrowed 2, was 27,000. And now this year, we borrowed 2, which is 1 all right, so I looked into it a little bit. For a 72-inch commercial mower, the price varies. So you can get you can get certain brands commercial 72-inch mowers for fourteen thousand dollars, but you can also get 72-inch commercial mowers, say John Deere, for thirty thousand dollars. So Sam's point about two mowers for fifty-four thousand dollars that doesn't sound right. Well, it's possible. Oh, it's yeah. possible if we're buying Got the, the best, Joe. top of the line yeah. John Deere mowers. But the question is, when you're when you're using someone else's money, do you do you consciously make that decision that I'm going I want to spend all that I can? I'm going to get now. There are there are arguments for that. Well, you spend thirty thousand dollars on a mower, maybe the warranty's better. Maybe yeah, maybe service say, maybe it, it, service through John Deere is better, but warranties and stuff like that and, and and service contracts are pretty competitive though. So if you buy a John Deere or Cub Kubota or any of the, any of the commercial brand products, yeah, generally they're pretty competitive. So my, that's my problem with that is. Uh, well, you know what, Joe? If this agenda had been posted, you would have had time to do the research on this. Oh, that's and true. maybe Absolutely. ask these questions. Yeah. And maybe you could have got some answers. How dare you but, and your little friends <laughs> yeah, ask well, things? You know? And the, yeah. other, the question that I would have had is, don't we get some grant money to maintain the parks and the open spaces like I'm pretty uh, sure we so, do. Yeah. So could we use some of that grant money to buy this equipment? Yeah, that's a good question. That would be a good thing to know as well, you know. Yeah, and then maybe you know, maybe maybe we put twenty thousand of our money towards it, and then 
the other ten thousand towards if we right. if, if if we need the highest end mower possible, maybe the other ten thousand comes from grant money. Yeah. Well, that would have been a good conversation <clears throat> to have, but. But yeah, we we didn't have, there, there wasn't a whole lot of time. I that mean, that ship has sailed. <laughs> if you were, if you're working, if you're working on Monday morning. And they post the agenda at noon on Monday morning. There's uh, there's just limited time that you can do any kind of research on this. Luckily, yeah. I was you know I was able to do this two nights ago, two nights after the meeting. So just yeah. to look it up. But it's it's so, so it's not it's not like we're 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 spending fifty four thousand dollars and and funneling money off somewhere else. No, but it's, I it's, think it's, Sam's point was that the fifty four thousand dollars was a hundred percent increase over what it was. In previous years yeah but if you so, think if you listen to the numbers that he read off though too the two years prior to that it went from forty thousand dollars for two down to twenty six thousand and then back up to fifty right. something so right he didn't question so, when it went down but he did question when it doubled you right. know what i mean so right it, well who, even who knows? thirty thousand to you know fifty whatever was still a lot you yeah, know? yeah yeah so, yeah, yeah. Well, and one of, one of those years we did buy i think one so there was there was a there was a dip. Yeah. Yeah. Either think, way, think, he's just well, why can't you get a question answered? Yeah. He, the the question was, how many do we need, and we don't know the answer to that question. No, we don't. So. Well, yeah, we all yeah we also don't know how many need we need, but we we got told well we mow a lot of stuff basically yeah. we're we're mowing we're mowing lots of stuff, so I don't. I don't doubt that either. I I, I mean that's probably one of our most most important. No, I mean, are there tools nine? That they have, are there, you know? my, my my question was. Are there nine running all the time, or are they? Are it's they just placed? easier because loaded on Bob's truck and John's the one going out today because Bob's right. off, or you know who knows? I don't know what the yeah how like, they I run things over there. I, I don't pretend to know. I mean, like you know, down down the street here at Hickstown Park, is there is there a mower on location there? I have no idea. I don't have. I don't think or I'm is afraid. it unloaded? I know there's. A, I know there's like a, a building in the, in the if center. If I start there. looking into that, I'll really piss somebody off. I'm sure. Yeah, you can go there anywhere with a camera, <laughs> and you're gonna piss somebody off. So, so yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, take it as it is. It's uh, it it is it is possible. The question is, is it necessary? So, yeah. So since uh, since 2019, another interesting thing. Since 2019, we borrowed 156 thousand dollars for recycling cans. So Cardis mm. mentions that they're about 50 to 60 dollars a piece. So that comes out to about 2,600 new ca- new cans. We have about 25 thousand housing units in GT. So since 2019, I guess it's 10%. safe to say we 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 replaced we replaced maybe 10 percent of those cans. <clears throat> I don't know why. They're well, super durable. There's been a lot of new housing also. Yes. A lot of new housing. A lot That's of new true. housing. A yeah. lot of new high density housing. So That's a good point. It's yeah. probably it's probably not a crazy thought to think that there's twenty six hundred new cans needed since twenty nineteen. Yes. No, that's not a that's not a between yeah. replacement cans, me, I would and that. he mentions some people buy some people need a second can, so they, they pay extra for a second can. And then you add in the new housing, so kind of. Uh, I think it's kind of it's, it's justified when you think one hundred fifty six. When you see the number though, one hundred fifty six thousand for trash cans, you're like, well, something's wrong there. No, but when you do the math, you, know? when you do the math. It's sixty and sixty dollars a can is a steal for those big cans. I the the trash can I think I just bought was a hundred dollars for my regular trash. So sixty dollars for a can is a pretty good price. Well, when you're buying twenty six hundred of them, when is it, yeah. you better be getting a little so, bit better price. So, <clears throat> you know, um, no, well, it's nothing really to worry about when you consider the school that we're going to have to build to send all the kids that are in the families that are using these new recycling cans. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yes, <laughs> and we can just put maybe we can just put second levels on our schools. Yeah, <clears throat> that'll take care of the roof problems in the school too. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, <laughs> put new roofs on the new addition on top. So uh, the next next clip up here is the oh the black box theater man. I love I love this topic. It is a uh, in my mind one of the biggest wastes uh, that Gloucester Township has done. But uh, so we barred multiple times for the black box theater on on the Black Horse Pike. If you're familiar with, I think that's up to a million <clears throat> bucks, or not, if not more, right? On how much we've was it five hundred and then five hundred so far? 
I don't remember the exact, but I thought it was around. What's, what's that intersection right there? It's a church and Black Horse Pike is where that is. Okay, it's the old, the old Rite PNC Aid bank, the PNC, yeah, the, the the big old bank building across from the cemetery and the old Rite Aid. Yep. Um, turning that into a theater. So yeah, it was mentioned that the construction hadn't started. Right, we borrowed multiple times, but the following morning, fence went up around. That's the, 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 so the crazy part and. One of the reasons that I pulled this clip was that he that in in the whole discussion about it, he said that phase one was, and Sam said, "Well, we we we've been borrowing this for now. We borrowed last year. We're borrowing again, and we yeah. haven't even started working on it." And they said, "Oh no, 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 we've been working on it." And then Orlando says, "Phase one is exterior repairs." <laughs> I thought, well. It looks exactly the same as yeah, it has. I wouldn't know that any uh, that any million of dollars have <laughs> yeah. been borrowed for that. For the right last there. ten years, it's looked exactly like it looks right ten. now. Ten, yeah, it's probably longer than that. So for um, two decades, or yeah, so. to to say that we've already started exterior repairs, that's that's not possible. Yeah. Other than maybe bulldozing the building next door for the parking lot. That's the only thing I can think of. That's the only, but nothing to that build, nothing to the bank building has been done. Well, interior-wise, they were, they got it inside, I believe, because from the outside, uh, or like what you're saying, the phase one thing that's outside, I know there were dumpsters there, and there was, you know, okay. when you, they, they left the lights on prior to um, that meeting, and then prior to that fence okay. going up inside, the, so the inside, you can see the walls, everything. It's like down to the studs. Like there's nothing oh, okay. on the walls. That's the only part you can see from the outside as you're going by. Oh, and then there was, it was like full of asbestos. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. so I think all the asbestos part was done. And then I saw people on the roof there a few days ago, like where the HVAC unit was. I don't know if they were removing that, doing something. I don't know. But so there's construction going okay. on there now. But it was just <laughs> funny that the. The comment was made about no no doing construction the following morning. Fence up, side, yeah. you know, boom, done. <clears throat> yeah, it's all the yeah. With borrowing, we borrowed $500,000 in 23, and we borrowed $500,000 in 24 for the Black Box Theater. What exactly, I know it's a Black Box Theater, but what exactly is going there, and when is construction going to start on that? Because, you know, $500,000 last year is just sitting there. And now another, we're borrowing another five hundred thousand. I don't understand why we're not borrowing when construction's ready to start. And why why are we borrowing it every year and letting it sit? Construction, to my knowledge, has not started or anything on that. Okay, so that's a lot of that. I'm going to tell you. Uh, so uh, maybe Mr. Cars can tag in on this. Uh, the renovations are going to be completed in phases, and phase one's going to entail exterior renovations and some partial interior renovations. So that exterior renovations are going to include um, some work to the exterior stone, uh, repair to the slate roof, uh, have new roofing and new windows. Uh, the exterior renovation also includes a new main entrance, which is going to have a reconfigure the stairs. Uh, some interior renovations include ADA accessible toilet rooms and a new wheelchair lift. When are we starting with them? Do you have a uh, do not have a time That's something you can provide, Mr. Sweet, and also members of council. I can do that. Thank you. All right, so Beetle's just going to work on getting that info over to Sam. Yeah, same guy that we worked on the roof. You know, we, we same guy borrowing for the roof. Oh, yeah. Over how many <laughs> years and how much money? <laughs> you I'm know sick of hearing about roofs. <laughs> I know, that's a roof. You know, it just dawned on me. What? They probably bought that building so they can repair that roof now for the next five years. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right, outside of, outside of that, uh, speaking of roofs. Right, that's why I was saying way yeah. into it. <clears throat> <laughs> Several hundreds of thousands of dollars have been borrowed for the roof of the, mis- of the municipal building. Uh, and the problem here is that what we've borrowed is as far exceeded the receipts that have been requested invoices, for... Invoices, Jeff. Yeah. Invoices. In, yeah. Invoices. If you call them receipts, then it, it leads people to believe it's money laundering, right? Yes. <laughs> it's Smith. <laughs> yeah. So essentially, uh, to, to, to break it down, I don't know the exact amount of money that we have borrowed for the roof, but the example was given 
okay, we borrowed a hundred thousand dollars, and then we have invoices for eighty thousand dollars, and then we borrow again for a hundred thousand dollars, yeah. and then we have an invoice for eighty thousand dollars, and the question kind of becomes, why are we borrowing how many, so far in advance? It, well, how, then, yeah. Well, yeah, because we've been borrowing for this since 17, I think it was. Yeah. 17 or 19. Does he say in the clip? We play the clip first? I, I, I think I think it's mentioned. I cut some of these roof things short because there's so many roof questions. Yeah. But, hit, yeah, hit, hit that clip first. So, I mean, does council have a, a, an answer to that? Is anybody questioning that? Anyone? Yeah, we're fine with it. So they didn't have it in there. No, but. They're, they're fine with it. Uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, did he have a total? Do you, do you remember what the total was over the course of the years? I thought I thought the total was around 400000 To repair the roof over, over the course several of several years. Mm. I thought it was higher than that. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. He did have a total, though. He had a total for the... Uh, he requested the invoices for the work that they had done and the invoices he got back on the work was I think maybe a hundred and eighty. Yeah, I remember hundred and eighty as a yeah, number for some reason. Like a hundred and eighty thousand and they had borrowed over three hundred, I think. Okay. Yeah, I, I I knew there it was several hundred thousand dollars have been borrowed. My question was and, and I guess one of the one of the big arguments that we got from from Cardis was well we did we did some on the back, but then I guess last year when they were doing work, that was on the front. Because we, we do it, we have shingles on the front. I guess that's mansion style. So there's shingles on the front. I guess they replaced a bunch of those. That was the work that was visibly done. No, last they replaced year. it with metal. Right. The front of the building is now, okay. instead of being shingles, it's metal. So they did like the police station side of the building and then around towards the parking lot where the entrance is to Yeah, the, the very obvious right. thing. So he, we spent money on, look, well, as you drive by, you see it. We spent, right. You know. But the side where the municipal building is, like past the entrance to go into the building, there's like still shingles and... Falling off. Most, How of, about, them, most of them are gone. <laughs> so. we, I don't Denise know. Denise and I were in the hallway that connects the, the front police department back to the, what do you call it, is it? windows in there to like this the court area i guess you'd call yeah. it oh, yeah, down right. there yeah and when you look outside there to the, like on, on the the building in the in the distance it's like it looks like heat went and it, like it's like warped and like w there's like stuff falling oh, wow. off and everything right it's, Denise, it yeah was, it's like, in bad shape it's <laughs> really bad shape right and you're like oh yeah but you can't see that from outside so it's right. one of those you know mm -hmm. we'll put some lipstick on this pig here and call it good <laughs> So you know that's that's been the biggest argument here is that there's been a ton of money borrowed. The the showing the work that that money's been spent on that's that's been, that's been tough. So it almost kind of seems like when you when you just need some extra money, put it in for the roof. Just just put the roof just put roof the roof in every repair. year. Yeah. You know, and, and we'll and we'll pull some extra money from the taxpayers for the roof, uh, and then we'll we'll send that over somewhere else. So, well, how would you know how much to put in for a roof? Are you a roofer? I'm not a roofer, and also, uh, are any council members roofers? Jim Nash, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if um, Helen, All Helen, right, I don't know if Helen, maybe Helen, uh, maybe she was a roofer <laughs> at some point. Uh, oh, but uh, but Jim is not a roofer. Okay, but he mentioned specific figures saying we borrowed. X amount of money, then X amount of money, then X amount of money, and the receipts were, I think, a hundred thousand dollars less than the money that was borrowed. But now we're borrowing again. And he asked if anybody thought that was concerning, and nobody said that they thought it was concerning. I think it's concerning. Nobody else thinks that that's concerning. I don't think either of us up here are experts on pricing of roofs, and I don't know if you guys are. But I don't know what a total price to replace a roof would be. I'm sure it's something we can look into, but is it a million dollars? Three quarters of a million? I'm not talking know. about pricing a roof. I'm talking he about. finished this coin. He wasn't finished. So if we look over the since 17, 18, those projects, 20 some thousand, 30 some thousand, I don't know what sections of roofs that, that has been done. I trust the, the supervisors who are, who are planning these projects. 
but I don't know what the total cost of this roof would cost. Do you? Do you? You should have said. Yes, I actually used to be a roofer. <laughs> just, yeah. just, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I said, so his you know his, his argument that I well I don't I don't I don't know how to price a roof, and it's not not about pricing the roof. Mm. It's just about all right. Look, you borrowed a hundred here. The invoice says it costs fifty. Right. And then you borrowed one hundred fifty over here. And the invoice says eighty. Where's the extra money going that we're borrowing? So we're borrowing too much money is essentially what we're saying here. Right. So it's not about pricing a roof. I don't. I don't think we, we don't expect council members to be roof pricing experts. Well, I'm or, glad you understood what the question was because there's nothing more annoying than asking a question. Say, for example, like getting you know, an answer what, to what, a different what, question. What is the best kind of dog food I should buy for my dog? And somebody starts talking about what dolphins eat. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes, I mean, and then and then for somebody to stop you from interrupting them answering the wrong question, right? And you have to you have to continue to listen about what dolphins eat. It has nothing to do about the best kind of dog food. Okay, so yes, so waste my time during that so you can answer about dolphins. But God forbid, God forbid, if you know you say something (laughs) about them interrupting you. So yeah, yes, I mean it's it's. uh, well, I, but I do appreciate. I, I do appreciate that. They I do, spoke I, up. I, yeah. I do appreciate that. He, that yeah, that he that he's coming back and and uh, and, and creating some dialogue there. Uh, you know, he, he misunderstood. He misunderstood what the argument was there. So, I I don't hold it against the guy. Um, I I did think that it, it was necessary that you stopped him. To say, hey, don't you know? That's not what I'm talking about. Stop wasting your breath. Yeah, and yeah, why, yeah my why, time. why waste any of that extra time? But. So yeah, we don't know. We don't. We don't know. Uh, we don't know the details on the roof. Um, they also didn't bring the receipts to the meeting. He didn't. Uh, so how would I know? <laughs> he, like, he, he didn't bring his his folder of receipts to the yeah. meeting. Uh, talking about uh, Tom <laughs> Tom Cardis, by the way, Tom Cardis. Uh, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't bring. I guess he. What do you? What do you mention? No, no, I didn't bring my folder. I didn't bring my roof folder. Or was it? Is that what it was? Yes, that was a sarcastic comment yeah. in response to my question because I was trying to ask him, you know, if you borrowed three hundred thousand dollars for the roof and you only have a hundred and eighty thousand dollars in invoices, don't you have some way of tracking to realize that you still have a hundred and twenty thousand dollars less? I mean, left because now you're going out and borrowing more money. You should have $120,000 left. Don't you have some way to keep track of that? So then I said, you know, like a folder that you say roof, and I have 300000 <laughs> So that's why he said I didn't bring my roof. Yeah, it was a folder. sarcastic <laughs> yes. uh, comment. Instead of answering my question, that's how he answered me, and then I was told to sit down. Yeah. So, yeah. What are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> me? <laughs> Just hanging around. <laughs> Checking out my folders. I don't know where my folders are. But I'm just hanging around. So Miss Smithman, uh, she asks. She asked a good question this time. Let's play it because it's a uh, because it's because it's a good question. It's a good question. If they they borrow the money, do they have to actually spend it where it, the request for the money was? Scores. No. No. Straight, straightforward answer. No, no. So if you borrow, yeah, we just need to put something down, like just say for instance a roof, <laughs> and then we can spend it on whatever we <laughs> so want. You could say three million dollars for a roof, Until, and the roof costs twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah, we'll just go spend somewhere, that somewhere else. else. Go somewhere else. So no, they don't. They don't have to spend it on. And I guess I mean that's, you know, that's not a rule that Cardis makes up. He'll tell you. New Jersey that. tells you you could do this. So, and and uh, as our friend Ray would say, not the best example set by the state here. It's not the greatest state yep. for uh, for that kind of stuff. Uh, there was some questions too about a uh, a bathroom. <laughs> Apparently, the library bathroom. They borrowed money for the library bathroom back in 2015. It still and, hasn't uh, been done. Nine years later. Right, and this is just another example Sam's giving of or early borrowing or just like, you know, like we were talking about joking around that 
you put a project on there just to borrow it and like you answer Smithman, you don't have to use it for that. So it's a feel good, oh yeah, we're gonna put this nice bathroom in the library. And then really they got the money and did something else with it. So. Yeah, so that, that 2015 money that they borrowed for the bathroom, that's not sitting in a folder somewhere waiting for the bathroom project to start. No. It's so now used. Yeah, so, so now when you know, when a toilet explodes on somebody because nine years ago it was supposed to be replaced, mm-hmm. Now we have to go to borrow money again. Well, I was thinking when that when he was bring, talking about this, like there was a, such a need to fix the the bathroom back then that they put it on the capital budget and borrowed for it. Yeah. But if it hasn't been done, if it was that bad back then that it needed to be replaced, right. how bad is how it bad today? Is nine years later. Well, that was another point he made. If you right. know the bathroom hasn't been replaced, did it really need replacing? And if it didn't need replacing, then once again you're early right. early borrowing yeah. it you're borrowing it 2015 for a bathroom that doesn't need replacing it until 2025 because right. obviously it's still being used well so. the the, uh, the comment about like you know well that's scheduled to be re- you know replaced well i'm scheduled to get you know whatever else yeah. new, whatever <laughs> if i can't afford it at the time i don't buy it that's how yeah. that works like yeah. all right so i figure out another way but instead, it's just, you know, it's scheduled for it. Guess what? It's not my just, money. It's your money. I'm want, spending it. Right. I want to think about this process of going over the budget when you're like, man, I really need extra money here. I got to find something. And you start thinking about all the buildings that we own in the township. And you go, library bathroom. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> that makes yeah, sense. That's it. And then when you run out of buildings, you just go and buy other random buildings in the township so, and then you you can, so that you can dig money out on them. So, yeah. Uh, so Sam asked if council had any questions regarding the capital projects, and uh, Jim Nash says he reached out to some supervisors by phone. So let's check that out. Getting back to, I know the ordinance passed for the, um, <coughs> the capital projects. Um, I know President Mercado asked questions and sent questions to Mr. Carter. How many of the other council members? ask questions regarding the um, capital projects. Would any council members like to respond to that? Yeah, I do. I also have this question. Every, every member of council, we sat down here beforehand, we asked line by line, learned, you know, and in addition to that, I reached out to multiple supervisors within the town and asked their opinion on items of the budget as well. Uh, how did you reach out to them? Uh-huh. Through the phone, and when he said he sat down with everybody, uh, when did we sit down with them? We had a workshop. There was a, it was discussed in our <clears throat> workshop uh, two weeks ago. All right. So my suggestion: mm-hmm. I'm a new council member, and I want to be the guy that asks the questions and proves that I'm the guy that asks the questions. I email the supervisors. I email my questions to them. That way, when somebody says, did you ask the supervisors? He said, yes, I did. I asked the supervisors, how did you ask them? I emailed them. So then the next thing Sam does is he does an open request for my emails to them. And then he gets the emails that I sent to the supervisors. And he says, damn, he asked the questions. Mm-hmm. So there was a pause there. And he said, there was definitely a pause. There was a pause there. He goes, by phone. Now, technically, Sam could probably open our phone records. Yes, he can. So, and, and I say I say technically because Sam said, I'm going to open our phone records. <laughs> <laughs> so, he also said, uh, workshop meeting, uh, Sam had to get the, the audio for the workshop meeting because they did some stuff for the Little League. And... He wanted to get he wanted to get the audio for that workshop so that he could find out what to do with the little league and then play it for the little league board because he's on the little league board. Mm-hmm. So if there were questions in the uh, uh, surrounding the budget in there, Sam has the audio. I don't know he hasn't had the chance to listen to it yet. So that's there. Um, well, I hope there is an audio because there was a redevelopment meeting also that night. And I asked for the audio of the redevelopment meet meeting, and I was told that there wasn't. There was technical difficulties because right? the clerk pushed record and went and sat down at the table in front of the dais instead of sitting on the dais. And apparently, the software or the 
operating thing for the audio was updating and she didn't realize it so it wasn't recording so then there was a workshop meeting so i don't know if it recorded for the workshop meeting or not hopefully they checked it in between it's well i mean if if so if the software updated during the one and they went back and kicked it off again likely it didn't update again so hopefully our workshop meeting is there depending on how long it took to update but I do believe that Sam said he did. He has the audio. Okay. He has the audio for it. Uh, All right. Well, so skip awkward. four. Super awkward. If uh, yeah, super awkward. If if there's no if no council members ask any questions in there, I'm sure that'll be up at the next meeting. I'm uh, pretty sure they did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, oh, this one was this one was good. Uh, so, a resident asks about the GT's participation in the street cop training oh, in yeah. Atlantic City. So, uh, let's check let's say check check this clip out here. Next, from Carol Haskin, ten Fourth Amendment Avenue, Sickleville, New Jersey. Can you provide the names and rank of anyone from the Gloucester Township Police Department that attend the controversial street cop training in Atlantic City in 2021? If a claim that the names cannot be provided is made, please provide the number of int- attendees and their rank. If Gloucester Township did have any attendees, what is the additional training cost as mandated by the state for attending this 2021 training in Lake City? Thank you. According to the Chief of Police, no one attended this uh, training. So this one kind of sent me down a uh, yeah a, a bit research on what that was. Yeah, all I had about. to start pulling this up to figure out what this street cop training was, and and more importantly, why was it controversial? So what I learned looking it up was that there was like it was just they taught them basically the opposite of what they're supposed to do. Kind yes, of thing. is what uh, you got. This, to, is, this is crazy. But it's like the state's mandating retraining cops that went to it or something for because uh, yeah, it was so it was so bad. They need to be reprogrammed almost. So the the street cop program just filed for bankruptcy. <laughs> Get out, really? <laughs> yeah. They, I, they, I, did I see that there? I I think I did see that in there. They filed for bankruptcy, and uh, yeah. The, so on the state on the on the on the state's website. There is there's a full PDF that I'll put if you go to gtobserver.com when this video comes out uh, look for this particular video and I'll I'll link it down below there's a there's a PDF down here basically it's the state's findings yeah on this on this program and this <laughs> this program was pretty shady I mean this was this was basically how how police officers can kind of weasel their way into yeah like how you know, to extend the stop traffic how to extend stop, a stop to like Unlawful get, searches. Yeah, get searches out of you and get you to... Yeah, that's crazy. Kind of pull you into their police car and just have conversations with you to just kind of to fish for different things. Uh, there was a yeah. lot... It, 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 it was... I, I, you yeah. you it's, named... Interesting, <laughs> we won't waste more time on it. We can go read what... Yeah, this, <laughs> yeah so there, there'll, there'll be a PDF. we got a lot to get through here. There'll again. be a PDF in the article. Uh, pretty, pretty crazy stuff. Uh... Next up on the list here is uh, Terry Fretz asked about the agenda, and Orlando thanks her for emailing her question in rather than going to the municipal building with a camera. I do appreciate Ms. Fretz sending an email and contacting us as opposed, as opposed to some of the other methods that a resident or may have in this township. I think this is the proper way to ask a question. Uh, for the record, I wasn't going to the township building to ask for it. I already knew that there were people that emailed the clerk. I was going down to see if it was posted on the board that it's supposed to be posted on. And for the record, I emailed the clerk. Exactly. On Sunday. So, yeah, you did I, email the clerk. I did email the clerk. I did. How many people emailed the clerk? Was it a few? I don't it? know. I don't okay, it was at least, at least I just, one. I know that she okay. had asked, you know, about it and then sent that email to me saying, look, I forwarded this clerk because it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't posted. I said, I'll go down there tomorrow and go see if it's, you know, on the board. I didn't go down there to ask a que- any questions, but, you know. Yeah, so backstory on this. Um, if you haven't seen the video, the, the last two videos that we posted – the uh, like we like we said at the beginning of the podcast, the agenda wasn't available. So on Monday morning, Keith. Well, prior to Monday morning, she had sent an, e- yes. an email to the clerk, who has at other meetings when it has not been uh, posted, 
has explicitly stated, even on the weekend, send me that information so that I can get it corrected. Yeah, right. that was Sunday. Right. It was still Monday morning. Was still not on the website. And then Monday morning, I went to the township building with a camera to go see. Hey, and look, it is posted up here. And I was looking for to to give them kudos. Like, look, it's posted on here. This is where we just had to go in and see it. I did not post it, in the, you know, in the in the building. I did go with the camera to go, you know, see that it was in there. Well, Apparently, that set off. The other thing is too. <laughs> There, there's been discrepancies where they said, no, it was posted at 9 o'clock this morning. Right. And people have checked at noon on a certain day, and they say, no, I know I checked at lunchtime. Right. And it wasn't there. So they're, un, they're not, not truthfully telling you when they're actually posting it. So then it came up, and somebody said, look, when you post the thing, can you put the date for the meeting and then when it was posted? Right. Uh, that's another that's another topic we have to, we have to, we can't forget, too. So... Essentially, you going there, 8 o'clock in the morning with the camera, to say, look, I'm documenting. Right. It's not It's not in the council room like it normally is, and it's not online yet. There's right. no copies of this thing anywhere. Right. So, this really upset Council President Mercado. I don't think that it was the uh, me going there. It was the more, there's no way to... Uh, what do you call it? How do you, how do you uh, to say we didn't do it, or, or you know what I mean? We got caught that it, it, it wasn't it was, posted. Yes. Yeah, because it was still, more of a uh, you know what, what would you call that? Then he's like a that it was documented, like, yeah, documented that it was yeah. not posted to the website and it wasn't on the bulletin board. And the only place that you could possibly get the agenda from was the clerk's office at when they opened at 8.30 in the morning. Right. So from Thursday evening when they closed until when they opened again on Monday morning, there was absolutely no way to obtain a copy of the agenda. Right. Yeah, and they still, they still were not truthful about it. Oh, they are now. Oh, wow. They look. Did they go online. Did they change it. Yeah, no, they, no, they didn't. They didn't. So, if you look, council meeting agenda two twenty six published two twenty three. Yes, I. So I they, sent an email and I requested that they correct that to the yeah. proper date it was published. Yeah. And they didn't. I, I didn't get a response to my email. So they uploaded this thing. They uploaded this thing on Friday. Or I'm sorry. I'm sorry. On Monday. Monday. Well, well, to noon. be clear, the clerk did send everything to the, the company. She did not do her job no, in doing correct. that. Correct. Yeah, the clerk. She did everything right. that she's supposed to do. The company that's supposed to update the website yeah. linked. It, it said that it was the council agenda, but however, when you clicked it, it was linked to the bill list. That was what the issue was. Right. So there was no way. And if you went to the bill list, it was the bill list. So they they messed up the 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 right. company. Yeah. No one's saying anyone in the right. town did anything wrong. That's no. not what anyone said. Correct. To not right, but the website said that the agenda was published on Friday, and. Um, I sent an email in requesting that that be corrected and that the proper date for the posting be reflected on the township's website, and it's still not done. No, I, and I don't think that's going to happen. No, because now they're not to burst your bubble, but well, yeah. the, what is the purpose of having the date published? I, it's I guess I mean, to help them look better or something. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, because I think because because somebody at some point said, "Can we put the date on there when you do publish it?" Yeah. So. We, I, th thinking that that was going to be like, all right, this is this is the time stamp now that we can go on. Yeah. Right, but um, that's what I'm saying. We know it's, it's not, not. Yeah, it's not. It's not valid. It's, it's just, it's not just, correct. It's a made up number now. So, right. yes, that's that's un yeah, unfortunately so that set him into a, a mood. So uh, multiple times throughout the meeting, he brings up the uh, the way to handle that. But let's play clip ten, right? With uh, yeah, because after because. Cause, so after he mentions this, Denise goes up and says, hey, look, he has a First Amendment right in here. And before you kick the clip off here, I, I don't know how much people know about this, but you can go in to a public building. Yeah. Like the municipal building or like a police station or any, any, any public building with a camera. And I... 
they have cameras on you all over, and that's okay. But <laughs> you can go in there. Look, this this is your government, and, and, Wait, and we are and at they, the top of the organizational chart. Yeah. Whether our township right. wants to admit that or not is not you know. Right. The These case. people work for you. If you want to go there and record something for a story, or you just want to hold a camera up, you can do that. It GT is, it, Observer is the name. We're, we are a it's absolutely quasi news outlet. It, it, it's you know? absolutely you're right. There are people. There are people that do this. For a living, that's true you, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at, I mean, look at, look at First Amendment auditors. They do this stuff for a living. Now, this happened to be not something that you were doing. You were just going to prove a point. Right. But there are First Amendment auditors that go into different places and they get arrested. Now, GT did, did a great job. Right. The, the women, at the, the, the women, at, the women at, at the clerk's counter did a fantastic job. They didn't. They didn't mention your camera. No. I mean, you walk and past. That was never my. Like, and when they, is, when they looked this way, I'm calling it away. I was being respectful. I was not doing anything. Yeah, I mean, look, look, GT, GT, themselves, they passed. And and when you when you think back to the previous argument that we had about the flyers going on cars, right? The chief, the chief in the police department, they passed. Yeah. No, we, that's, that's, that's yes. He he absolutely understands that we have a First Amendment right to free speech and that the. Municipal building parking lot is public property, and that we can mm-hmm. put flyers on cars, and it's not an issue. But when it when it comes to filming in the municipal building, you're right. The municipal building is public property. Um, we have a right to exercise our First Amendment rights there. It's public property. The employees are public employee and public servants. Yep. They're public employees. They work for us, mm-hmm. and the business that's being done there is public business, which we have a right to know what's being done so and the the fact that you can record in public because um anything you see can be recorded because there's no expectation of privacy in public right if you're in public you don't have the right to privacy right you have to create your own privacy and like he said they're recording us 24 7 anytime you're in there anytime you're out in public you're being recorded all the time somebody's recording you right so and and the reality is, what's the issue with recording? Other right. than other than it, it left pr- than, it left proof that you know that was what the, right. the case other was. Other than there. you have something against transparency. So, yes, I mean there there are limitations to what you can do. Like you couldn't open the door, go back through the clerk's oh, office, no. and that's I didn't and do any of that. There. But in the public I areas, know, you, know, you, you saw in the video the, the the woman sent me into the clerk's office. I was like, okay, I guess I'll go in there. I wasn't what I was here for, you know. Yes, I mean, but, there, you know, there, look, there, there are, yeah, there are, there are restrictions where you do, know, but, but any public area you can do that, and, and uh, President Mercado's, you know, his, his well, take on it was, out of his ears. those women didn't deserve that. Well, for one, they're public employees. Yeah, well, play, yeah, play the, the clip, public so. setting. What clip yeah. are we on? Ten. Ten. Members of our department, our clerk's department, had to be videotaped. Video day. They came here to work. It's one thing if people want to take shots at council and sit outside and waste their time on election day with a sign, okay, or videotape and say <laughs> their First Amendment rights being taken away from them. But to come here and videotape members, employees of our township, what was the purpose of that? Because it's that our is, First no, no, Amendment no, rights. I'm not done speaking, Miss Coyne. Okay. Is it you my five for, minutes or you yours? Ask for respect. Pause it. You ask for respect. Thank give you. me respect. If you pause the okay. clock, I asked him to pause it. Go ahead. You come up here on my First Amendment. Well, you know what? I'm expressing my First Amendment rights, and when people here on this dais express their First Amendment rights, you do not like it. Says who? No, no, I'm not Says you. Speaking. I'm not done speaking, Ms. Coyne. Okay. You're going to come up here. You want to lecture us, okay? I'm going to lecture you, and I'm going to lecture your little friends, okay? They can go out there and disseminate crap in the parking lot. They can come here and videotape people, but those people do not deserve that. They do not deserve it at all, and that's what I'm speaking about. They, those people behind that window did not look like they were hurt They at all did not you. care one iota that, that, that I was recording there. The one thing I, I, he said that when people on this dais use their First Amendment right, 
you don't like it. That's what he what said. do you what do you think that he was referring to there? Because I have an idea what I think he was referring. I to. I think he was referring to the letter that went out. The last time I was the main topic and, of and Dina. Oh, yes, that's what I thought he was talking right. about. But now, so if by him saying that though, is that not him claiming that that was those people? It wasn't the the pack that they claimed that it was? I was. I don't know who did that. You know, right. Well, I, I would like to know how he knows. You know what I like and what I don't like. Yeah, true. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't understand that either because I was thinking we've never, we've never complained about them expressing anything. We've always no, no. I mean, look. They the say, only thing I can recall is that when they said they have a First Amendment right, also with when it comes to that, when it came to that letter about myself and Dina. Right. And well, now I, he's bringing it just, up again that we don't like it. I no, just, no one said that we don't like it. We said that. Well, whatever. Right. Well, I just don't understand why he thinks he can dictate to us what is proper, what is classy, um, you know, the proper way to communicate with your public servants in the municipal building. Right. You know, if you want to send an ego, that's the proper way. You know, yeah. don't, but you could do it any way you want to. You could call them, you could go up there, you could send a carrier pigeon. You have those options. Yeah. Who is he to tell you the proper way to do it and the classy way right yeah i don't know yeah so i i i don't know i i i, I looked at look i've i've, I've kind of geeked out on on first amendment audit videos where some of these guys <laughs> some of these guys look you want to go down a rabbit hole audit the audit it's a fantastic way because that guy yeah that guy does it from a legal perspective but some of these guys that do this uh they go into they, they go, go in they, they go into for places reaction. and they they try to get reactions, and they're kind of some of these guys are they're just they're just dicks in the way that they do it. <laughs> some of them some of them will drive by a police officer and give them the finger to see if it if it causes anything. Right now, what you did wasn't an audit at all, but it on it also kind of it just it turned into an audit kind of in, in a way. It like there was an outcome of it was. Hey, they passed this audit. Like, that was that was that was pretty good, but that wasn't even the intention here. But it made me think about these people that are kind of disrespectful to. to but to, if I did want to do that, I have every right to do that. Absolutely, that's, you do. that's yeah, the absolutely. thing. So what? And the, him the, to sit up there and say that is completely out. You want to talk about out of line? That's out of line, right. you know. And the reality is, if I mean, you went up there, you were respectful. Um, you know, you said please, you said thank you, you didn't bust the door down, they let you in. Um, I, I didn't see that you did anything that was disrespectful no. or... But the know, narrative is trying or, to be or, spun. Or you know? classless. And the reality is, if you went up there and you were disrespectful, and you were a jerk, you're allowed to be disrespectful that's, that's and a jerk. That's absolutely right, yeah. And who's he to tell you, oh, you know, you can't come in because I think you're disrespectful and I think you're a jerk. Yeah. You know, I mean, this isn't Nazi Germany. Yeah, right. Everybody can go in, whether you're disrespectful or not. Everybody can request something any way they want to. Yeah. And he's not the purveyor of, you know, what is proper. No, and, and thank you for going up there and, and saying that all, you know, when the, uh, what's it called? The, um... <laughs> I won't say, but the tyrant, right, yeah. <laughs> goes yeah. in off on a on a tangent. Now you you get up there for the rest of, you know, the the people of saying that that's not right. I don't know. Well, it nobody nobody should be shamed for exercising no. their right to free speech and for trying to question the government because the reality is we need a lot more people to do exactly that. Yeah, we need more and people to do that. Yeah, right. When when you have people in positions of power and they're, you know, shaming people and trying to make people sound like they're terrible people for exercising their rights, I have a huge problem with that. Yeah. And um Oh, this is their playbook, Denise. I mean it's not, it's no different than what they do with Sam with you know when he's running Trying to scare people from ever, you know, questioning anything, and now this, they're going to try and say that you know I'm, you know, classless. How many times have we heard him talk about there was always an agreement, you know, between the other side, you know, and us about something else? Well, I didn't make any agreement with anybody. I, I'm yeah. sorry. There was an I don't know what agreement that between was between both sides. Yeah. 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 No, I don't know. It, it was really 
irritating. To, well, I, I mean, he I he's still know. he's still bringing up that I stood out front with the oh, uh, yeah. a political sign on election day. <laughs> That's my right. I'm standing on a public <laughs> sidewalk. You're not with allowed the sign. to because it yeah because it because it, it hurt his feelings. Yeah, oh. but uh, so his his I mean his idea of of what this is all about is uh, well, it was probably one of the most disrespectful things because. His I his thought is, look, they just did it for clicks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Fodder. Just for clicks. Yeah, just for some fodder. So that's uh. There wasn't a need for, and I'm sure you're aware of it. There wasn't a need for an individual to come in here and videotape uh, the people that work in that office. There wasn't a need to come into council chambers and uh, bypass the receptionist. And the receptionist instructed that individual, you should have stopped here. So, a phone call, but that was the purpose of creating some clicks and some comments and some fodder for the next time there's a podcast. I'm sorry, but he creates the the, the content most of the time for you know, yeah. For this. So, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what. Look, clicks have never gotten us anything. There's never. There's never going. <laughs> clicks have never going to get us. Anything more than what we've got now? We put in, we put on an educational podcast and and we kind of throw some humor into it. Yeah, but it's not like I, I don't I, like that. I don't I don't I don't know what you know whether whether two hundred people he, watch it or or twenty thousand people watch it. It's it's what we feel like doing. It's what it, I feel, it's and when he said too, not, we're wasting your time. Denise had this conversation the other day, right? Denise, like I. I could waste I waste more time in my life than anyone else. But you know what? None of it's wasted because I wanted to do it. Yeah. I, I could do whatever I want all day time. long. It's my time. Yes. I can do whatever I want. So Denise, if you were you wasting your time when you were out there with a sign? Was that wasting your time? Absolutely not. I had no, a great you time. You wanted to do it. Yes, right? I and you had to a do good it. time doing yes. it. So who's he to say what's a waste of time, right? Exactly. Uh, well, no, his point was that uh, he ended up winning the election, so I wasted my time standing out there because he According watched. to him yes. that you wasted exactly. your time. Exactly. According to him. According to right. you, you didn't waste your time. No. According to me, I didn't waste my time doing whatever I'm doing. I'm, you and I aren't wasting our times right now because we want to do it. No one's holding a gun to our head saying, go do this. We want to do this. So right. it's not a waste of time. I, I, Even I, if we I, never aired it. If we were doing it for, like, my daughter, when she was real little, she would do videos... <laughs> And never post them online, like making slime, like, oh, you know, hey, guys, and talk to the camera, right. record them. <laughs> she never posted any of them, but that's what she wanted to do. What do I tell her? You're wasting your time with with that. Yeah. No one's, who are you to tell what she wasted? But that's what she wanted to do. That's what I want to do. That's what you want to do. Get out of here. I think, but I think it's, I, look, I, I look back in, well, the first council meeting that got me involved was probably 2018, the, the tax increase in 2018, and then 2019, I started getting involved with different things. And I don't, I don't regret any of it because it's been. I mean, look, I, I learned local government, and I, right. and I don't think that anybody else that I could walk up to anywhere and ask him questions about local government could answer anything about it. Yeah. And I don't think that, I don't think that the folks that are sitting up there could answer half the questions That's, that that you or I could or, or, mm-hmm. or Denise could could an, could could answer about yeah. it. So I don't, I don't regret any. It. Look, it's it's kind of been it's it's a nerdy hobby. Yeah. But uh, look, we have to do cool stuff like this, and yeah. and uh, yeah, so I it's not a waste of time, and it's it's definitely not for clicks. We're we're not gonna we're not gonna get rich. We're not gonna make any money off of this thing for sure. So it's it's an <laughs> educational it's thing, fun. and it's yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. Outlet. Come out here and hang Whatever. out and 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 talk about uh, talk about local politics. Entertain some of you folks. Well, so. you know, the reality is all this blew up over um, an agenda that wasn't posted. That was nobody's fault at the municipal building right and um you know it it should have been thank you for bringing this to our attention we'll you know put institute some procedure to make sure in the future that the agenda is in fact where it's supposed to be by friday morning right something along those lines not beat up the residents because we we, pointed it out you know i would love i was thinking too when I was doing all the clips for this meeting, and there's so there's so many clips, and there's so many that I didn't do, yeah, because this thing would go on for th- for three hours just tr- just explaining all the different things that were happening here. Yeah. But I was thinking, I would, I, man, would would I kill for just a really good dialogue in a meeting, and and not have to talk through because there's already so much information given in the meeting 
that we wouldn't have to try to break it down. Yeah. You know, it would probably be more of a boring podcast and there wouldn't be anything controversial. <laughs> but it would damn, be really it, nice just to get an answer to a question every now and then. That's that right, would yeah. be really and it, nice. And it would be so good to just to see government working well. And then, you know, that and, and that and we, and we could discuss that and then show people what it really looks like when government works well with the people. Yeah. But unfortunately, that's, that's not what we've gotten so far. So, uh, Sam... Sam was our last. Sam was our last guy to come up here, and uh, there's 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 two things. There's there's two things here. Sam has an answer. Sam has Sam has something that he needs to say here, and then uh, Mr. Nash wants to say something. But I don't know if he's allowed. So keep an eye out here. Yeah. It was poor. It was classless. That's all I have to say. About well, it. if we want to go down the road of poor and classy, you could look to your. Right, and his wife attacked me and attacked my wife. If you want to go poor and classy, so I only got seven seconds left, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, his wife attacked my wife. Oh, yeah, raise his hand. All right, thank you very much. That concludes our public portion. Nope, nope, you're not allowed to talk. Bang the gavel, you can't talk. A couple times, a couple times, he's uh. Tried to say something I noticed and couldn't. So I was looking forward to hearing what he had to say. And he's uh, kind of been shot down. So I think those guys are, well, they... they, they, they have to stay in line. They, you, you, you walk they together. Walk you you walk together and something like that. It was some 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 line that they gave before. Where oh, yeah. You walk together and you're for, together forever or something like that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm look, I'm, I'm hopefully they're friendly enough that they can have the conversation where one says to the other, look, I, I I need to be able to speak up. And the other one says, okay, but I don't think that's going to be the case. But. <laughs> that's a good one. Well, well you, guys are, you guys are my little friends, and we've been together for a while. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're Denise's little friends. <laughs> you and your little friends. And, and, and I, I'll, I'll be the first to tell you that if I say something wrong, Huh? If I say something wrong, I'm told about it. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, I well, you got to be told tonight in, lot, in real time if, what what was <laughs> what was right or wrong. So we ran into and we just have we happened to run into Denise and we 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 met up to go out to dinner before the podcast and we ran we ran into Denise and I said, hey, we should do Denise on the podcast. Yeah. He goes, oh yeah, I can ask her. And I go, and then I thought about it for a second. And I paused. I go, now I can get yelled at in real time. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, it was funny. Ira texted me the other day and. He sent a text about something. I don't even remember what it was. And um, then he said, uh, can I can I be your little friend now? <laughs> I said, sure. And he sent this text back. He was like dancing and jumping up and down. <laughs> oh, my God. I think the other thing that we can't leave without mentioning is uh, this town solicitor, Carlamir, he did not say one word the entire... That was the first evening. meeting I've ever been to in six years where I think that man didn't speak. Yeah, six really? Six years, yeah. I mean, he it's, not one word. Usually there's yeah. something comes up or he says... And you know what? That, it was the one meeting he should have spoke, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, is that not odd? Like, when there's, there's, there's a... I don't know. Well, so it's so hard, too, because it's so hard to understand... It's so hard to figure out if he if he ha- if he is speaking, because I I can never. Well, that's true too, because the microphone's usually bent around. You know, watching the other direction. Yeah, watching. I mean, now that now that we do this, and I've got to sit through the council meeting and replay it over and over again. I don't go anymore because we're going to watch this thing several times. But when he speaks, there's a lot of stuff in the software when I when I, when I have to record the clips that I can I can modify yeah. to, to lift it, and it's when he speaks, it's almost impossible. Well, yeah. that's done on purpose. Yeah, that's intentional. Yeah, so, yeah. there's there, no there's so many that. of them. There's so many of them whose microphones are, are pointed yeah, away. Well, yeah, Tom Card is just the same way. So most I, time you can't hear him. I yeah, I couldn't him. tell the last one. I was like looking. I'm like, is it that he's too short for the the cam- like the the microphone? Is it like he's like <laughs> it when bends, he reached it bends, up? Keith, right. It bends. <laughs> no, but it was it was bent. Like it looked like, it looked yeah. like anyway that it was bent towards him. Like I don't know. It seemed. Up on his forehead, right? Like I don't know. Maybe I, I don't know. Like I couldn't man. reach I, it. I don't know. I think if that was the case, you'd never be able to hear him. But you do hear him. No, he does. He leaned into it, but it was yeah. either I don't know something was wrong with it or not. But. Maybe the first speaker at every meeting that goes up there says, "Can everybody please just position?" Ray Powell has done that. Right. Done I know. That. I know. Multiple he does. He does. Yeah. 
Yeah, if you every council meeting right now, every council member right now, just position your microphones right in front of your face right now. So. Well, if they did that, then they would, they would start talking like this over here. Yeah, I don't. I don't but I found, anyway. it, I found it interesting that Orlando could hear me all the way in the back of the room when he told me to be quiet. But oh, we yeah. could never hear them. So. Yeah, yeah. How, yeah. Do, how does that work? You know? I don't know. But. All right, so that was it for this one. We have some uh, follow up we'll do with uh, Sam Sweet, getting a little bit more deep into the budget for those budget nerds out there. Yeah, there's some budget stuff coming up. Uh, maybe, maybe the next week we'll 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 all get together with Sam. Uh, if you're around, we can all get together with Sam, and we can talk about the budget more in depth. Yeah, I think Sam did a really good job um, this time bringing up budget items yeah, I agree. trying to get answers he did an excellent job i think and it's a shame he really didn't get any answers because he had some really good questions and some really good points right he never gets answers no no one ever gets answers but he he's educated i think a lot of us and hopefully a lot of other people about what the issues and the problems are and why our taxes are so high and it's because of the over borrowing the early borrowing and the overspending and he's educated us on that and um yeah know, unfortunately that they need to be educated on it <laughs> oh they're they're educated i think they're upset that we're becoming educated by it but, well yeah. yeah it's not getting any traction denise uh, yeah, no. you and your little friends. <laughs> I know. Your well, friends. thank you, Denise, yes. for coming on tonight. We appreciate uh, your stopping by as a guest. I like spending time with my little friends. <laughs> fun. Yeah. yeah. Our, All right. Uh, yeah. Our, our latest video is over two thousand. Yeah, where's our two um, thousand views now? So the new. Where's the new um, subscribe so, uh, thing? Yeah. If you are, uh, if oh, you this. have, if you've never been to our website before, it's gtobserver dot com, and uh, on on YouTube right now, it's at Restore G L O T W P. Yep. Probably going to change that up a little bit to reflect the uh, the new name. But for now, you can if if you can't find us, just go to gtobserver.com. That's where you'll find us. Uh, and we are most active in social media on Facebook at uh, gtobfacebook.com slash gtobserver. Uh, when you go to YouTube, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, and then uh, hunt down our little group also in uh, facebook for that's where denise's little friends you can find denise's little friends all denise's there. little friends are in the uh <laughs> gt observer podcast uh facebook group so yeah. all right yeah. thanks folks that's the way to go looking forward to having more little friends <laughs> yeah all right folks we will see you guys uh after next council meeting all right thanks see you